Welcome to the Crit House, everybody. I'm Jeff Larson. A long time ago, when I was a young man, I ran marathons. And in doing that, there's a phrase that I learned that really resonated with me. that You can't run a marathon alone. It takes a community. It takes friends and family and other runners to help you get to the finish line. And it's the same thing with photography. You can go out and you can take pictures alone, but to be great, to really make yourself a good photographer, to improve, it takes friends and a community. And that's what we're doing here on The Crit House. We're bringing people together to talk about, to discuss, and think about photography. This week on The Crit House, we're gonna take a look at my project, the Mass Ave Project, which I've been working on for a long period of time. And we have, once again, our photo educators group, an amazing group of photographers, starting with Dan Milner, a photographer, journalist, YouTuber, blogger, creative evangelist for Blur Books. Suzanne Ravy is a photographer, writer, and educator, a professor at Clark University. Erin Carey is an artist and educator, and she is at Tufts University. And the great Alex Kilby is with us as well. He is a, was a professional photographer for 30 years. He is now the host of The Photographic Eye, and it is an honor to have all of them with us. Here is that conversation on my project. So for the last, actually for the last 30 years, um, I have been taking pictures along Massachusetts Avenue in Boston. And a couple of years ago, I went into my archive and I looked and I said, oh, I've got, I, I like that street. I keep going back to it. I started to realize that that's a place that I kept going back to. So um, over the last three years or so, I've decided that that's the place that I go. So when I go out and I take pictures in Boston, I usually start on Mass Ave and the areas around it. And so these images are a part of that project. Um, and I don't know what's going to come of it. I would like to see it on a wall at some point. It may end up being just in a zine or a smaller book um, that, uh, that could come out. Some of these are older. This one is something from the 1990s. I do not know if that is a real gun or not. I'm hoping not. Um, and some of them are newer. Some of them are iPhone. Some of them are with a point and shoot that I carry around. And then some are with a drone, as is the case with this image as well. So I'm trying a lot of different things to show images around. But this is my look at Mass Ave. I look at, uh, when I take pictures, I look at light and geometry more than I look at the humanity. I hope that I find some humanity in the images that I, that I take. Um, but I guess I'm looking for, from you, my uh, educators to sort of help me understand what I have and what I'm doing and where I might be able to go with it. Um, and I'm looking for your thoughts. And I, I, I will also preface it by saying that one of the things about the Crit House is that one of the criticisms I have of this program is that the reviewers are often too nice. Um, so I invite you to be as critical as you can about what you're seeing and what this is and what this should become. And to that end, I'm going to start with Aaron Carey and get your thoughts on what I've done here. And I know awesome. you've seen some of my photography in the past, but here you go. I have. Well, thank you for sharing, um, for sharing this. I was aware of the work, but to be honest, I had not ever seen it quite all together like this. And I didn't fully appreciate um, previously that this may be represented uh, the length of time that you're photographing. Um, so I'm super interested in this project. I'll start by saying that I perhaps have a prejudice in the best way possible for projects that respond to place. So I think like I'm interested in this because it's you're rooted in a landscape that moves through many different neighborhoods, right? So we're describing time, we're describing architecture, urbanity, we're describing people. Like there's so many possibilities for content level here. And I think you touch on a lot of those possibilities. Um, I definitely see in terms of like the visual look, in terms of moment, like I see Henry Cartier-Bresson a little bit, like I see that you're enamored of him. Um, perhaps he's an influence here, but I also, perhaps. I think- a little bit. I, I see Trent Park a little bit for you also. Um, I'm curious about that. 
So I see that you're sort of balancing like the sort of like the lone figure, the shadowy or silhouetted figure walking regularly. And then there's juxtapositions where we're seeing actions, activity, leisure, work, tourists. So that's something else that I think is really thrilling that in a short period of time and place, right? Like maybe it's just three or four miles, but then across all the years, all the things that transpire in this like you have three miles of neighborhood. In that way, um, I think the potential is huge and I think you're hitting on it. Um, I happen to be, so I'm, I'm going to give you, I have a list, a short list of pictures that I think are like at the, the height of, of sort of like, like they're supreme, like they really hit it for me. But then also I wanted to offer you to just a little bit of feedback about like things I might pull out. Um, Please do. So I love numbers one. Uh, yeah, the first one I think is a great, I also think it's great as a first image. Um, so I think there's architectural elements, but the mystery of the thing, like I'm somebody who really responds to a picture that outlines something without fully giving away all of the, all of it, right? Like that's really important. So the mystery, so that's not just like a random silhouette of somebody walking, but somebody still in a place alone under the shadow. Like there's a weight there to the potential meaning. Um, numbers 14, yeah, I love, I love this one too. So there's actually, I, as you were originally speaking, I was writing little numbers oh, okay. down to make sure I had them right. But the one of the the shattered mirror window and the man that was certainly on my list. Yes. Yep. Yep. 14, uh, 16, 17. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, 21, 24. 21 is killer. So for me, I noticed um, that you're using the silhouette often of like the lone figure walking, which becomes like, right, like a metaphor for journey and the experience of life. Um, I think I probably would encourage you to be careful about how many times we're utilizing the silhouette as a visual device and whether or not you need all of them. So I might just go through and say like, so when you're editing, right, with your work prints, I would just pull out like, what are only the silhouette pictures? How many do I really have? How many do I really need? And like, are there different moments or things happening that justify the need for all of them? So like you, this you one, know, I only know how to do one thing, so. No, <laughs> <laughs> no that's a good uh, point. It's, it's an excellent point and I am aware, I'm aware of it. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, but I think the project is great. And so like, I think you're probably noticing from my image selection, like I'm really struck by the place, like the humanity. So um, the moments where the something is happening with a person that's so specific to time and place, um, it really struck like struck me like the little boy jammed inside the newspaper bin you know with the girl at the very beginning of the project um i i love getting to know the characters you know like you're defining it's not just like a general description of the place so i was less interested in actually sometimes of the wider pictures of like the number two for example i didn't really need um or the drone picture of the pipe with this with the names of streets you know that serves a certain purpose which defines boston by using the words but mm -hmm. do you need it no i think the title tells me it's mass ave and like I'd rather actually love to just get to know the particular cast of characters without being told, like, for me, this was a placeholder of like, it's a signpost, like quite literally, but also metaphorically. Yep. Um, yeah, but I, I really like the project a lot, Jeff. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, in the spirit of harsh criticism, Mr. Milner. You suck, Jeff. No, <laughs> I thought so. Um, that's, the, that's the old photo school. You suck, start <laughs> over. Uh, so one of the things that I find really interesting is I think this is a light centric project. It was very, very apparent to me that light was the central focal focal point of what was basically leading you to these photographs. I also love the fact I love documentary projects that have edges to them. And Mass Ave is perfect example. I did a story years ago on Pico Boulevard in LA. It's very similar. Um, <clears throat> you know where it starts and stops. You know where your area of focus is. You don't drift outside of it. I think that's a great way of building a, a solid body of work, which I really think you've done. Um, Trent Park is my third point on the list. There was definitely a Trent Park influence in here for me, which is his work in Sydney um, and Minutes to Midnight was to me just a magical project. But there's also another little interesting wrinkle here before I get to the pictures that I would call out. But one, I'm not a big street photographer guy. I've just never been the kind of work that that appeals that much to me yep. because I find I find that much of it is pretty detached. It's just random images of random people on the street. However, in this, there's three or four of these pictures where these people know exactly that you are there making these pictures. There's a little acknowledgments of your presence, including the one where the woman is turning around 
as she's walking sort of away from you and turning this one, you know, she knows exactly. And these scenes can kind of, they can go favorably or they can go unfavorably very quickly. And I, I think the fact that they're acknowledging your presence to me, this one as well, there, there's a little bit more, there's more endearment here with these pictures. I feel much more drawn into that with the fact that they are acknowledging that you're there. And I think that that makes it, it makes a huge difference for me. I also feel in terms of culling images, um, uh, the, the, the small child in the box is a little too, you know, cutesy for me. I don't, I don't think it fits the theme of these other photographs. I think the drone pictures as well, the street signs, if you're designing a book and you needed an element on a page that may tie you in or something, you could potentially use those, but I don't think they fit the same, um, the same theme. And then there's another further down. Oh, the guy on the bicycle from above riding through the, on the bike path. I don't think that's an essential. It's a little bit, not that one. It's the one further down. Um, he's on a bicycle, pedal bike. And it's he, horizontal. He, horizontal. The, the road is split, this yeah. one. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know. This doesn't, because you have a, you have an Im a group in here of maybe 10, 12, 15 images that are the same eerie light-based human connection pictures that form a nice, tight, cohesive body. And to me, that's the theme, the, the guts of this project are those pictures. And anything else has to fight to get in that. Why is this in here if it doesn't fit that same mood and feel? Um, and other than that, I would just keep keep banging on this because I do think it's a solid thing. And also, just to be, you know, total photo school on you, <laughs> you have you have to own the work that you make. So when you're introducing it and you're talking about yourself, you have to own it. And just say, look, and, and the the people who are critiquing the work are going to be the ones that are going to tell you where you're at, you know, whether what the level of the work and, and where it fits in and all that. So you kind of have to own it a little more when you when you introduce it, because, look, I see a ton of work shot on the street that gets all kinds of hype and it's terrible work. It's There's just nothing to it. And this is actually good work. I think that there's a nice cohesive theme of images in here that I would be, you know, proud to walk away with. It just needs a few things called out and presented in the right way. And you're definitely on your way. Well, so that that's a fascinating piece of information for me about how you present your work and how you talk about it. Um, and I, I, I will, I'm going to think about that. And I thank you for that, for that input. Um, thanks. That's, that's great, great, great thoughts. Suzanne Ravi, can you tell, tell us where Dan is wrong? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, actually, I agree with him on on uh, quite a bit, and uh, also with Aaron on the silhouetted lone figure. I I just feel like that's such a trope in photography that you need to be very careful. Oh, I know how to do it. You know, you have to make like the masterpiece <laughs> one. Um, so I would I would sort of call some of those out. Um, just uh, you know, there are some lone like I, I the lone person under these trees doesn't bother me, but. Um, there was like three silhouetted figures in a row at one point. Yeah, here, one, two, three. Um, and it, it just, I don't think they're helping each other. I think they're, you know, if you are going to keep some silhouetted pictures in, I think they need to be farther apart. You know, okay. as I was saying, you know, when you're kind of doing a sequence, sometimes having a picture between, um, like to me, they cancel each other out because they're all a little too similar, you yeah. know. Um, so I would, um, and I, so I would encourage you to try and avoid making those kinds of pictures. Um, and I agree with the kid in the box is a little, it sort of takes me out of the, this, it feels different to me. You're closer. Like most of these, you're a little bit farther back, you know, where you are. And unless you're going to start to include more pictures where you're closer to people, I'm, this one just doesn't quite fit. Um, and, and the light, like, as Dan was saying, the light that you're using is not in this picture, you know, I mean, or, or where you're, you know, that kind of directed sort of harsh light that you're using, um, which reminds me also, I'm going to mention another photographer, Ray Metzger's work Oh, um, yeah. looks a little bit like his work. I think he uses that light. He also did a lot of silhouettes um, in his, his urban studies, I guess, was he in Philadelphia or something? Um, Anyway, uh, but yeah, I would call this down. Um, you know, I do like this picture, but it also feels a little different than some of the others. But I kind of would like to see you make more pictures like this. Hey, I, I would too. Um, be great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think, um, and I, I, I sort of, 
you know, Mass Ave, like, I think of it as sort of a busy <laughs> boulevard and, and it seems sort of empty in your pictures, you know, which of course, mm -hmm. that's maybe, you know, that's obviously what we saw with Alex's work um, and it's here too, uh, but I kind of miss the, that rhythm, you know, um, sometimes street photography can be like jazz to me, you know, it's a little, um, it can kind of have rhythm. Um, this one might fit a little bit with the girl, the kid in the box. You know, there's something about the light here is similar to that one. Um, so it also feels a little out of place to me for some reason, you know, uh, the way he's engaging with you and the person in the back there. Um, I like the photograph, but it does feel a little like a, a slightly different from a different project or something. Well, it's, it, I'll tell you, it is from a different time. And it's, it, it was, this is some, some time back in the nineties along okay. Mass Avenue. So it, it may be that. In fact, the, uh, the kid in the box um, is also from that sort of same period. Okay. So different okay. camera so, on film, probably different focal length. Um, and I don't think at that point in my, uh, in you my were life, was, a newer photographer, it. right? Yeah. You weren't, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. Um, in, in, interesting that you've noticed those things. That's uh that's, that's, that's good too. Um, and then there is one picture that I, I do quite, I think is quite strong and that's um right below this one um yeah yeah this um, one i just think this one is the bee's knees like oh i'm glad you like it i'd like it yeah too. It's something about him being framed in that doorway the the gesture of the person in the back these lines and shadows um i think this one comes together really really nicely so Glad to hear that. Well Thank you. Well Central Square in Cambridge. Okay. Alex Kilby, sir, mm -hmm. your, your time to lead me in a good direction, sir. Well, I'm going to lead you up a snicket in Halifax. Uh, okay, well, first um, of all, you have to tell me what a snicket is. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I say, um, no, I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw a photographer at you, uh, uh, Bill Brand. Oh. Um, mm. There's two images in here. That that immediately when I saw them, uh, I was like, "That's that's basically Bill Brand." Um, uh, the first one, which is uh, his, he has a famous image called the Snicket in Halifax. And when uh, I see it in your little, you just keep scrolling down. It's um, there we go. Get it up, 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 down, one, down, down. <laughs> it's a horizontal. Sorry, so it's a vertical in the middle of the, your frame. There. The oh, oh, in the middle. Oh, this one. Yeah, yeah, that one. Okay, so so Bill Brandt's like sticking. Anyway, so this one kind of re remind me of, of, of Bill Brandt. Now I know that we've been talking about um, silhouettes and and things of that nature, but I, I think for me the, the the figure in this is kind of secondary to the light. You know, it, 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 it this is more about the light and and the composition rather than that that figure in there, and and. Interesting. As I've as we've been talking, I've been looking at these these images um, to to save my eyes. I've made the screen smaller, um, and of course, what's happened is that the thumbnails of your images have also become actually extremely small. So what's happened is they're sort of being distilled down into their essential parts, right? So like this image, as that little thumbnail, is just that is that that spear of light coming through. And and I've I've what a wonderful way of looking at things. The next image that was Bill Brown is further down. It's one that says warehouse. It's a um, it's an industrial picture. That's it. That is almost uh, and obviously I, I I won't be able to share my screen and stuff. But that is, it, it is almost a a it's like an uncanny carbon copy of of a Bill Brand. Um, now obviously you didn't go out there. Just I could go make a Bill Brand picture, but it, it just goes to show that I think you know that. Street photography, and I know that Suzanne's talked about, you know, so people and stuff like that, but it doesn't necessarily have to have people in it, you know. And, and I think if you make a decision one way or the other, obviously I'm biased towards no people because <laughs> I prefer <laughs> the, the emptiness of things. Um, but I just, you know, if, if you kind of, I think you need to commit to something, commit to one thing. You, you I evidently have, um, you know, the, the technical chops and the visual chops to, to, to pull out these elements, but it does seem like you're kind of, and I know this is over a long period of time, that you're jumping from thing to thing to thing, and that each person has obviously their own unique um, taste things they're drawn towards. But certainly when I'm looking at your work, the images that are I'm 
that are resonating with me most are the ones that have that strong graphic visual element because that's the, the very first image that you showed the one with the uh, the truncated legs or the torso that one i love that that is so up my street i just dig i dig 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 it a lot i don't know if that's a technical term um but that that's really lovely Thank i think you. that's you know the wonderful thing and and if, if if this was a whole series like this of say displaced body parts <laughs> <laughs> in, in a place i think i think that that starts to be something different than as suzanne was also mentioning about that trope of the silhouette that's that's going in a direction where people are sort of going okay i haven't seen too much of this before yeah, because you know what yeah. it's like when you start seeing the same thing. Obviously, it's so easy to dismiss it. It's so easy to just kind of go, "Yeah, all right, show me something new," and and that leads towards something. I think that framing. There must be lots of opportunities to do that because you do a lot of framing like this in, in your photography. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. really, really helpful stuff. Thank you so much. Um, I'll leave it out for anyone who had any. Last little bits of wisdom, going once. Um, well, so all of all of this is really helpful to me, and I can I can I can tell from just this very short conversation that I'm going to go a different direction um, <laughs> with my with my photography and and everything that's on the uh, card in my camera over here because they're all silhouettes. Is <laughs> going to have no, to go no, out, just, the window. Yeah, just... <laughs> um, Thank you all for, for your input. It's greatly appreciated. Um, I, I, I value the way you're talking about each other's work, the way you are um, uh, have, have been generous with your time and showing your work as well and providing input to each other and to the, our audience as well. So Suzanne Ravy, thank you. Alex Kilby, thank you very much. Uh, Aaron Carey and uh, Dan Milner, all thank you for being on the Crit House and come back next week. We have more of our second critique group. Thank you all for watching Hi. the Crit House.